bare feet. I may have a few other ideas. You will. And the company that'll bring it to you, AT&T. Have you ever borrowed a book from thousands of miles away? Across the country. Just ahead. Take next step. Without stopping for directions. Or sent someone a fax. From the beach. You will. And the company that'll bring it to you, AT&T. Have you ever paid a toll without slowing down? Bought concert tickets from a cash machine? Or tucked your baby in from a phone booth? You will. And the company that'll bring it to you, AT&T. Have you ever opened doors? I'm home. With the sound of your voice? Our car, please. Carried your medical history in your wallet. Your wife's going to be just fine. So this is where we stand on the atrium. Or attended a meeting. I really like what you guys have been doing, but... Um, in your bare feet. I may have a few other ideas. You will. And the company that'll bring it to you, AT&T. Have you ever watched the movie you wanted to, the minute you wanted to, learn special things? That's all taken from jazz. Now any questions? From faraway places. Oakland? So where did jazz come from? Good question. Or tucked your baby in from a phone booth. You will. And the company that'll bring it to you, AT&T. Announcing a fabulous sale on the Commodore Plus 4 personal computer. It's the first computer with four built-in software packages. The big four every computer owner needs. Built-in graphics and sound commands. 128 colors, 64K memory. Basic language with over 75 commands. Word processing to write letters, reports, rewrite, and edit. Create graphics, charts, graphs, full color design. The electronic spreadsheet balances checkbooks, business statements, income tax. File management for mailing lists, inventories, recipes. Your software is integrated so you can combine a chart or a graph with a word process report. It's compatible with hundreds of software packages for business, education, or family fun. Retail stores like Sears originally offered the Plus 4 for $299.95. Now on this special TV offer, you can order the Commodore Plus 4 for only $99.95 complete. Plus, you'll receive $150 in discount coupons to use when you're ready to expand your system. So don't delay. Due to limited quantities, only one order per customer will be accepted. Use your credit card and order the incredible Commodore Plus 4, the $99.95 computer package you've been waiting for. Use your credit card for rush delivery by calling 1-800-257-1234. That's 1-800-257-1234. Or send check or money order for $99.95 plus $10 shipping and handling to Commodore Plus 4. P.O. Box 7500, Atlanta, Georgia, 30357. The most earth-shattering dig dug. The most realistic just. Whole position at its best. Only the Atari 5200 Super System plays them. Moon Patrol with arcade graphics. Real sports baseball. You're out. Only on Super System. 2600 games, the adapter plays them all. The Atari 5200 Super System. Its only competition is you. <laughs> child be before you buy a computer? High school, when he's planning a career? Elementary school, when she can either fall behind or leap ahead? Or preschool, to give him a head start? When you buy is up to you, but Commodore makes the decision easier than any other computer. Because it's a 64, it's very powerful. Because it's Commodore, it's very affordable. just a video game from Atari or Intellivision. Invest in the wonder computer of the 1980s for under $300. The Commodore VIC-20. 
Unlike games, it has a real computer keyboard. With the Commodore VIC-20, the whole family can learn computing at home. Plays great games, too. Under $300, the wonder computer of the 1980s, the Commodore VIC-20. Coming soon, Commodore brings you Gorf, the Wonder Arcade game, and Omega Race in home versions. Commodore. When it comes to space games, nobody compares to Atari. Excuse me, have you compared them to Intellivision? Intellivision? Sure, they've got great space games, like Intellivision Space Battle. I didn't know. And now there's Space Armada and the incredible Astro Smash. I didn't know. Here, compare for yourself. Intellivision Space Games from Mattel Electronics. Once you compare, you'll know. than ever from worlds of wonder. Doug gave it to Madeline. Edith gave it to Walter and Roy. Dr. Marsh gave it to his patients. Have you got it yet? It's Juno, the internet service so simple to use, everyone is passing it along to their friends. But you don't have to wait. Just call this number today for your free software. You don't have to be a whiz to get online. If you can do this, you can use the web. Your first month is free, and every month after that, you'll save compared to America Online. It's that easy. Just call this number. Don't be the last one to get online. For your free month of Juno, call today. Shopping at Toys R Us computes into big savings. The world's best-selling computer, the new Commodore 64C, comes with GIA software, 1541 disk drive, a smart buy two. Well, for a higher intelligence, the powerful Commodore 128 with number keypad and more, also speedy 1571 disk drive. Computing costs less at Toys R Us. In the world, Toys R Us. Apparently, some people can't remember the name of the computer that my brother-in-law, Rob, recommends. Well, here's how to remember it. Computers often make people quite angry. John? See? Computers often make people quite... Uh, computers often make people... Can I show them mine? Nearly works. C-O-M-P-A-Q. What? C-O-M-P-A-Q. I prefer mine. Computers often make people... I know, you think you're going to be the one person in the world who can't operate a computer. You think you won't even be able to hook it up and it'll sit on your shelf mocking you. Well, this is how easy it is to get started with the new Atari XL home computer. Once you get the whole system set up, there are over 2,000 things you can do with it. Just plug this into here. Very easy, because there's only one place it goes. And there, you're ready to go. 26 seconds. I can go again. I can do it much faster. Go again. Let's go again. Show and tell time. Another teddy bear. My teddy's name is Teddy Ruxpin. He talks, he tells stories, he... Four bachelors not included. Hi, my name is Teddy Ruxpin. Can you and I be friends? Yeah. I really enjoy talking to people. I would like you. Teddy Ruxpin, the storytelling bear, comes with illustrated book and cassette from Worlds of Wonder. All right, that's enough of that. See where we're at today. 
Alright, well, it's been about a week since I last streamed. I've been meaning to make this a more regular thing, and I guess if I uh, wait another week to do it, it's not going to be a regular thing. Got a, got a bit of work I want to get done today. We'll see how well I do it. Get it all done. Super distracting. There's people working outside on my street and uh, many knocks on the door and things like that. So hopefully that's a bit past now and I can uh, try to get into this stuff. Still, still kind of playing around with the stream layout. Still kind of playing around with my new mic and all the rest. Hopefully as I continue to play around with this, I can... Uh, start to refine it a bit. I'm still playing around with like the, the ducking between the music and the mic, so hopefully that's not too, un too annoying. And this mic is way more sensitive than the last one I had, so I'm trying not to um, sound like I'm chewing gum while I use it. I'm trying to get into the world of beacons. I think I've played with that a few years ago. See, what is that all about? Yeah, I want to say back when Mozilla was pursuing Firefox OS, we had an IoT beacons kind of thing going on. framework or I haven't played with this I don't know I haven't uh, mostly so far I'm playing around with um, actually I should ta change my to-do list because I'm not actually working on that today Super scatter brain stream today. It'll probably take me a while before I actually get into uh, what I meant to be doing. Yeah, my bit rate is at around probably 2,500. If I Reduce my resolution, it's kind of pointless for a coding stream because then you can't see anything. Let's see. So, yeah, so some of the main things I'm going to look at today I'm working on Lockbox, which is a password manager for Firefox. I've got a few bugs that are left in our sprint, and I want to look at a few of them. A couple of them are just basic form validation kind of things in a React app. And then one goes a little deeper into Firefox, and I was doing a little research into it earlier today to try to figure out where to get into this. I should probably get my, uh, my dev setup going. Let's see. a lockbox. It's an add-on for Firefox right now. Shows up as this little icon in the toolbar. I've got no logins yet. But one of the things that we don't check right now is like we don't do any validation on these fields. So 
you can just kind of enter garbage. So one of the things I'm going to want to add is uh, some light validation to make sure that the website address as HTTP. Make sure the password is filled out. So these are pretty simple things. The other bit is a little more interesting that I gotta figure out how to dig into kind of some Firefox guts. On a normal website, when you enter a password, Firefox will ask you if you want to save the login. And while we do want that to happen on most sites, we don't want that to happen on this, the actual Lockbox app. Oh, I know what I was going to do. I was going to edit my uh, to-do. Let's get to that real quick. I'm going to say I'm working on Mozilla Lockbox issues. And that should just be a more generic title. Man, I think I need more coffee today. My brain is just not in gear. All right. So it's not input autocomplete off, because what it is is it's not that we don't want autocompletion, it's that Firefox will prompt to save the password in a little like drop down or door hanger, and we want to turn that off specifically for this app. I'm trying to think if there's a. It doesn't trigger on this page already, though, I don't think. We don't want Firefox to prompt the user to save a login from a login management app. Now, the interesting thing is I don't actually see that coming into play here right now. Let's see. No, oh, that's not the key I wanted. If I log into GitHub, this is a fresh profile. It should ask me for something. Let's see. Password from another monitor. Alright, let's try this. Unless I turn that off altogether, we'll see. Yeah, it's not asking me at all in this Firefox, so it could be that that's just turned off in this profile, which I need to play with. Alright, yeah, that's not what I expected to happen. Let's look at my options real quick. I see it's turned off. So you gotta have save logins and passwords for websites turned on. Let me try that again. Actually, let me try it over here. Edit this, save it. Yeah, there we go. We don't want this to show up while we're editing a password within the password manager. Because this isn't a normal website. Although it kind of looks like one. To Firefox anyways. Okay, so that's one. So those are the issues I'm kind of looking at working on. I'm trying to decide if I want to tackle the hard one first or the easy ones first. The hard one means I need to look into some kind of Firefox guts to see where the... Basically, I think to toggle a preference while I'm on this tab. Unless I find an easier way to do it. I might be a little more comfortable working on the uh, simpler issues first, though. We dive into that first. I'm gonna try to get the first ones done, the easier ones done, maybe as a warm up. Let's 
So a web address must contain HTTP or HTTPS, which it doesn't check for right now. That's why I can just put foo.com in here. Like it doesn't even have to look like a domain. It's just, it'll save that. Oh, that's going to be annoying until I fix it. I'm going to turn that off real quick. So the easiest way to do this is to just check for the prefix. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the components for that page. Change the size of this window a little bit too. There we go. I'm still playing around with this auto hotkey script. It lets me um, switch and resize windows, and OBS just follows the position and size of them, which is kind of a neat feature. Gopher. Yeah, I don't think that we're uh, accepting Gopher URLs in our password manager at this time. All right, so we're looking at... Um, this is going to be under the... List. And this is a, a browser, or this is a, a Firefox extension right now, but it's basically built as a React app. That's React and Redux. And I kind of forget, where's the best place to put validation for a React and Redux app? I think I've been putting it just in the component, because I don't think by the time it gets to Redux, you really have a chance to do validation. Let's see, we're looking at the manage page. I also keep forgetting that I'm meeting myself while I drink and cough up a storm. All right, so I think we're going to be looking at uh, the edit item details component, which I think the way I've done it on other apps is I just add some local state to the component uh, that flags whether there's a validation error or not. See, how do we want this to look? Yeah, we just kind of want this little bubble to come out. And uh, I think we've got it so that the create entry button grays out. That's simple enough. Looks like we got two states for that. No, oh, that's, that's interesting. Oh no, this is a part of the uh, it's a part of the app. Yeah, so this is a thing called Zeppelin. I haven't used it a whole lot except on this project. Um, the UX designers use this to kind of mock up and uh, demonstrate what this stuff should look like. Oh, I see. So this is what we want to have show up when you focus the field, I guess. And then this is what the error should look like. Okay. I'm wondering if we do that anywhere else. Or if this is a component I'll have to come up with from scratch.
Yeah, this doesn't look like a component we have anywhere else. Don't need a tag here, leave me alone. do a little light domain validation. Alright, well I think I'm gonna leave this little chevron off for now and figure out how to do that later. a lot more sensitive. I gotta be careful when I pick up my uh, water bottle and set it down. It really like makes my desk ring like a bell. Alright. Oh, that's ugly. I guess what I want to look at is the styles for this thing. It uses item detail CSS. Okay, there's not much to that. So I guess one bit of state to add to this is whether or not it's focused. Let's see, we're starting off with types here. We've written a simple CLI script to convert a string like that. Oh, uh, so like you're trying to embed the image in different sizes as data URLs. I'd say that makes a might make a pretty good uh, webpack plugin. That or um, a React component. Might make a good React component if you want to go all the way up to that level. state so I guess one of the things I want to do oh that's a good point you'd rather it was done at build time than runtime um yeah that's a good point yeah 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 because then it built at runtime would be when it would be doing the calculations or whatever on your image yeah 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 webpack would probably be a good place for that because there's already stuff like um there are like SVG loaders and image loader and things like that that do pre-processing on images and image file names It's not working. Okay, so I guess the state I want to add here is, um... Oh, this is the overall field, or overall form. I don't need the fields. Actually, you know, that might be a, now that I'm thinking about it, that might be a weird place for it to be too, because, um, the webpack will do per, like, per resource manipulation, but it doesn't necessarily do anything about, um, like, converting an element to something else. Like swapping out your image tag for a uh, that's why I thought react might be a good place because it would take one thing that looks like an element and output a different element oh, I gotta change these nightbot messages they're dumb okay actually you know what I want to do here edit item fields is probably what I want to play with Yeah. 
So what I'm trying to think about how to do right now is how to take this field, this website address field, and add the like little hint box to the side of it. And whether I want to make that a part of the field component or not. Oh, I see. Each field isn't a separate component. There's a component devoted to the set of fields. Which that almost might make it easier. Let's see, do we have any state here? We don't have state. Oh, we do have state. We've got state down here. Let me use the edit item fields component from this module. Cool. Edit item fields is a full on class, so it should be pretty easy to add state to. Team up? Uh, I probably won't have time to do that. It sounds like it might be an interesting idea, though. I'm not super sure where in the stack it sits, though, because I am. It, my hunch is that it's probably best to start in Webpack, and it might help to have a companion React component. So, like maybe the. Uh, the image manipulation gets done at build time, and then the React component takes the results of that. But I'm kind of being fuzzy about it, because I think the clever bit will be how to make that work together. Okay, so I'm gonna add a constructor here. Right. I am just not with it today yet. Hopefully before the end of the stream, I'll have, uh, my brain will have gotten into gear. I drank an espresso just before the stream to hopefully wake myself up. Alright, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wanna add a, I wanna add a constructor that gives us a state. And what I wanna do is say, okay, when this, when the website address is focused, I wanna have a state that then causes this tip to display. Okay. Okay, so field text is its own widget. I'm wondering, uh, can I get an on focus event coming out of it? Where's field text? Field text is under widgets, which is all the way up here. Okay, so it looks like field text has a spread operator on the prop, so it's going to pass everything through. Let me try this real quick. I think I can just do this. I'm just going to do this as kind of an initial experiment. frustrating about this is there is a a live reload whenever I edit the source files of the, the extension, but it's going to reload the extension, which means it doesn't reload this page. And so you can kind of see in a second what happens, I think. Maybe I want to unclick. But yeah, so here's what's going to happen. So page is open right now. Which can I make? Yeah, I can point that way. Page is open right now. But when I make a change to my source file, that page is going to close itself because the add-on will have reloaded, which kind of blows. Let me try... Hmm. I want to unclick. Yeah, so now if I come back to my browser with the add-on installed, the page is closed because the add-on got uninstalled and reinstalled. 
Well, that sucks, but all right. I guess that's going to be one of the things I want to do more of while I'm playing with this is, um, oh, that didn't work either, um, is figure out some more ways to ease this development process so there are fewer little repetitive steps. So I did take the click event. It's interesting. Like, I think I'm modifying the correct thing. Actually, that would be interesting if you had um, the variant images built in Webpack and maybe had a web had a React component that referred to them. And uh, I don't know if your project uses server-side rendering, uh, but that would be a way for a React component to inject the right image tag and not have it happen at a uh, runtime. Hey, Smurf D, how's it going? I'm for Wednesday streams and Tuesdays. Uh, kinda, I'm still feeling kinda random. This was a day where I didn't really have any meetings for the rest of the day. That's another thing that, that is kind of strange since uh, my work with Test Pilot ended is my schedule totally got thrown up in the air. So yeah, it might turn into Tuesdays. I figured it's been a week since I uh, streamed last, so I should try it again soon. Even if maybe my brain isn't feeling it yet. Alright, what am I missing here? So right now I'm just trying to get a handler on this form field. And this is a new project too, so some of the, the file structure here is a little unfamiliar to me. So I'm just kind of exploring the project, trying to figure out how to get a, get a hook into the right spot to detect that I focus this field so I can display this this helper. keeps appearing. I don't need that. Okay, so an unclick handler didn't do anything for me. But, uh, data thingy. Is this there? It should be passing along whatever arbitrary pops I put on there. Well, I'm editing the wrong thing. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I absolutely am editing the wrong thing. I'm editing the item fields component when I mean to be editing the I edit item fields component. It's always delightful. Okay. There we go, it's a little better. Okay, so what I want to do... Oh, this has got some interesting things going on. So what is this controlled props? Hmm, interesting. 
interesting. This is just kind of like a preprocessor for these props. Alright, so I'm just trying to add this little on focus handler. I think that's an event I can use. Uh huh, we did. Okay, so there's my event. So when I can, when I focus this field, I can fire off a handler, set some state, and the state can control visibility of our little helper. None of this is rocket surgery. This is very basic React. But I'm kind of at the beginning stages of exploring this project, so... It's more like... Rocket acupuncture for me right now, I guess. That's a terrible analogy. Let's add a state, a state property, let's call it, um, I don't know, focus field. Start off as no. We can add a little helper method here. I'm gonna say uh, focus field is uh, fields here, so we we'll probably want these kind of help us for each of them. I'm trying to think if there's a generic way to add them. Oh, actually, I can do it to this uh, controlled props. Central helper. Nice, okay. So that's kind of a kind of a clean place to put it, I think. one of these fields calls that method or calls that little helper with a name so I can just say If this uh, this music ducking I've got going on is too distracting every time I type a key. There's one interesting thing since I got a new uh, mixer for the stream is I can actually hear most of the stream output in my headphones pretty live, which I couldn't do before. It's also strange hearing my own voice. But at least I can tell if it sounds absolutely terrible. Okay. So I added a new state property, added a little helper to set that state property. Now I'm adding an event to all the fields so that when they're focused on focus, we focus the field with the helper. I guess I don't really need the helper there. But that's okay. I guess what I can do here now is I can say if and now I'll do this real quick. Let's uh, extract that property. It also doesn't help that I have a very clicky keyboard, so that's uh, tripping my mic all the time. But I, I figured that would be kind of part of the character of the stream. So you get to hear my. Uh, my very clicky keyboard. Alright, 
so what I want to do here and say if the focused field is origin then render this div now this is where it gets interesting too because we do localization on this app so I can't just put any text here I need to put some like that's why these these words are like weird weirdly spelled or weirdly cased is they're meant to be obviously the wrong text because translated strings come in later I'm just gonna throw something in here to make sure my logic work though Back to our browser. We had on reloaded. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, looks like there's an error. Ah, I see. Uh, blow this window up a little bit. All right, we have a uh, parsing error. I want to wait. I screwed something up. Oh, one too many. Equals. There we go. How about now? Seems pretty happy now. We got the add-on. Cool. Edit. Ooh. That's not right. What did I do? I guess we need, um... Uh, maybe we should have our console going. Okay, when I hit edit, ah, oh, there's an error. What did I break? Invalid prop. Children of type array. Supplied to localized. Expected a single react. Oh, I see, I see, I see. This shouldn't be here. This should be outside the localized because this itself will be localized as a separate string. Yeah, music player died. Come back. Thank you. Here we go again. Open lockbox. Edit the field. No errors. Okay, cool. So this isn't exactly what I want yet, but I do have the logic here where if this field is focused, I've got uh, a DOM element that shows up. And if the field is not focused, it goes away. Of course, what we really want is for that thing to be in a bubble off to the side. That's cool. That's fine. You know, actually, I'm going to go back to my editor real quick. I'm going to give this a class name. I'm going to say this is... Uh... Eventually, I'll probably extract this as a, as a component of some sort, but I'm just kind of playing around right now. Call it a uh, field tip. We got some CSS for that also that we'll probably end up poking around at. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. I see, but our CSS uses dashes, so let's do that. So I'm terrible at CSS, and one of the ways I get around that is by using in browser dev tools. Let's open that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. My class name is on there now. Field tip. Yep. Yep. Okay. It's one of my favorite things in the Firefox dev tools is the style editor. hate this theme. Let's go with the dark theme. There we go. Here's the style editor. There's a cat in my office meowing at me. Oh well, she'll come back for attention in a minute. Okay. 
And one of these, one of these, is the style sheet I'm looking for. Not that one, not that one, not that one. I help if they had some names, but we're not doing it that way, I guess. They've all been inlined by way of uh, webpack. I'm just kind of, there we go, item fields. And it's interesting because um, whenever we're, because the webpack thing we're doing scopes them using these weird little IDs, so I guess I need to play with that a little bit. So even though I gave it... Oh wait, huh, that's interesting. Oh, I see what it did. I gave it a literal class name, whereas... This is using some, like, scoped class name stuff that I'm not as familiar with. What I really want to do is say, um, whatever this is. Hmm, okay, what if I do something like this? Okay, so style editor. This is not going to translate exactly, but I'm going to just start playing with the fields, with the styles. Let's call it, uh, field tip. Top? No, tip. This might do with having an even smaller window. You can kind of see what I'm doing. That well, doesn't make that much difference. Alright. Okay, cool. So I just added a border, so I've got a handle on the right thing. I'm going to try to adjust the styles and get them just right, and then I'll worry about putting them in my original CSS. Now what I'm wondering about is, can I get it to align to that field just right? within the label. And that's not exactly what we want, is it? Where are the bounds of our label? This is my very clumsy stumbling towards CSS that works. Ah, uh, no. Display contents. Okay, I guess that means the surrounding element gets uh, hidden. How display contents works. Oh, I 
Display Contents, a magical new display value that essentially makes the container disappear, making child elements children of the element the next level up in the DOM. Huh. Okay. Well, that's interesting. So that means all the crap I'm trying to do with the label doesn't work. So I might have to play with that, because what I'm trying to do is to get this tip to display relative to the field. Are those responsive? Those aren't really responsive. I mean, I guess I could do something as terrible as, like, um... Yeah, so I could say... Well, that's the interesting thing, though. I can't do relative positioning, right? Because if it's doing display contents... They don't have that as a reference. I suppose this is where, like, a display flex would come in. You know what, actually, yeah, let's do that, actually. Fumbling towards a solution here. I don't know why we're doing CSS grids in this layout. Yeah, it's ugly. Okay. Yeah, let's do this. both the, the uh, input field and its tip in a div. This is incorrect. And I may make this its own component at some point also. Let's do that. Have I broken anything yet? I broke something, didn't I? break. I oh, know that I didn't break anything. That's just the uh, add-on reloading. Yeah, all right. Okay, so I didn't break anything yet. I've got my field and tip wrapped in a div. So how about I do this? That's an ugly style name. I'm just kind of experimenting now. We'll figure it out. I think we are at sheet 17 now. I should remember the number. This is a really bad way to look at it. I was just like singing the praises of this thing. And now I'm having trouble navigating it. There we go. So we're gonna say, using the uh, scoped garbage here. Yeah, that looks right. Say that's um, field and tip. I give it a border. Aha, okay, cool. So we're gonna treat this as a unit. We're gonna say, um, I don't know, let's say uh, display grid. Since we're using grid, and uh, we're gonna say. Grid? No, we don't necessarily need grid, do we? Flex would be fine. Don't even need, no, I need that. Okay, okay, okay. Let's do flex because I understand flex a little better. Flex. Yeah, that's getting closer. I want to say. I 
This appears when I pick a different one, but that's not so good. I don't want the height to change. So maybe we don't want flex. Apparently something I want to do is like this. Position absolute. This feels dirty. It's pretty close. It's pretty ugly though. It's pretty close. We'll play with it some more. Say 290. Seems about right. All right, so let's take the border off our parent here. And I mean, I guess we can do some things like um, I think this comes with some CSS in this little tool. probably extract this as its own CSS rule at some point. There we go, so that kind of, it's looking more like a panel. It's looking a little more ripe. Rule for box sizing. I'm trying to remember what it was. Box sizing. Oh, don't go to W3 schools. I want to go to MDN. I think I want box sizing border box. And what that does, if I'm remembering it right, if I tell this thing to be 280 wide, then no matter how much padding I put in, it stays 280 wide. Let's see, what was our padding? 10px? 10, 12, 10, 21. 10, 12. 10, 12, 10, 12. Yeah, do that. That more closely matches the design. Do we have a border on this thing? I mean, we've got a border, but, uh... Yeah, all right. It's this right here. Opacity. And it's getting closer to the design. And I'm missing that little chevron thing, that little pointer. I might have to figure out how to do that. And we've got a little bit of a. Uh, trying to figure out exactly how that text is aligned. I swear that border's a little darker, though. Where'd my cursor go? You know, we don't have a focus ring on this thing. Oh, well, we'll 
we'll get back to that. Okay, well, that's kind of a tip. I if I can find that as a as a uh, image anywhere. Because I swear that's a bit darker in the uh, in the mock-up. Get a 1.0. That's too much. I'm just kind of eyeballing it, and I don't think I'm right. Is my mouse actually blowing that, glowing that color? Yeah, it's um, a trackball. It's a uh, CST L track, and this is actually a. Uh, you can't really see it because of the chat, but. Actually, a giant plastic ball. Some people have put uh, billiards balls in there. It's kind of a neat little track ball. You know, I'm, if I can't find one of those things, if I can't find one of these little chevroni things right away, I might punt for now. Rather than get too fiddly with it. But I feel like I can do this already. that in. Oh yeah, that came from the uh, the design that I copied and pasted in, didn't it? Did it? Yeah. How's it going, Kitty? I guess if I copy all that, that'll give me something interesting. assume this is already set at a more global level though. Maybe I don't need that. Um, I might do this too. CSS still says something. Oh no, cat attack. Echo. There we go. The cat demands lap time. I changed the markup, but I didn't change the CSS. probably put something in here to automatically open the management field while I'm working on it, or the management page. Ah, what happened to my CSS? Hmm. I still have a class name of tip. It's within field and tip. my CSS look like? It's a little weird, but this is one thing that I dislike, is style editor helps me get closer to styles I'm actually trying to use. But it 
doesn't directly correspond to what, say, Webpack ends up doing with things. Yeah. See, so, yeah. And I still don't quite understand these scoped styles yet. I'm using them on. Maybe it's something a little like this. Let's see. Okay, that's better. So I guess I've understood it that far. Yeah, it's weird because I like you name it one thing in CSS and then with the way we're loading it with Webpack, you have to refer to the styles via, I guess, an auto snake cased version of the hyphen cased version or camel cased version of the snake case. I don't know. This is a slightly new approach that I haven't used in uh, past projects in the last year or so. But as long as I understand how it's working, I'm not going to argue too much about it. And I guess it helps prevent me from, like, needlessly nesting styles and things. Yeah, this is kind of a weird convention. that's a small success so far. I don't have the little, uh, the little chevron notchy thing there, but, uh, we will find that in a minute. I guess the other thing I want to see, since I haven't done it yet, is how do I add some localized text? So I guess we can use our, another element on the page as an example. So we've got, um, Just as simple as this. We can say I think this is just meant to be garbage. We can say, um, about a origin tip. And I want to say that should come up with garbage text. Yeah, so it comes up as garbage text. Um, which means this should be an indication to me that this hasn't been translated yet or included in the strings to be transla translated. And so we are here, we have a locales directory. Let's open one of these up. Oops, I didn't want to scroll down. Yeah, so we're gonna look for item fields origin input as a string and add this new one after it. Let's see. Common? This might not be the right file. Nope. Maybe we want uh, widgets. Nope. Huh. I guess maybe list? Hmm. 
Item Fields Origin. Yeah, okay, there we go. So here, so the way this works, this web app is going to be translated for probably as many as 70 languages, depending on how many volunteers we get. And so I can't put English directly in any of these elements. I have to put some like placeholder, fake out text, give it an ID. And then I go into this .ftl file, which is kind of a name value definitions file. It's more complicated than that, though, because it also covers notation like, you know, like say here. This is the placeholder for the, the input field. So you can identify like individual attributes and things. But what I want to add here is um, item fields origin tip and you can do I think multi-line text I gotta copy and paste this text because I just want to add it mm, boop, 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 boop. yep I sure can well, let's just do that I'm just gonna put that directly into the strings What's our line wrapping situation like here? Yeah, that's pretty good. So I'm pretty sure I can do that. Oops. And now the thing with that is, at some point, these strings can get translated. And then we can have, um, like, someone who knows French swing in. And uh, they can add the translation to it. And then the application can select which of these files of strings to use at runtime. And so all my placeholder text gets replaced with the correctly translated text. But let's see if that worked for me for now. It did not. Interesting. I wonder why. Did I name it the wrong thing? Oh, I named it. <laughs> I see. I named it uh, item fields origin top, not tip. So, tip. Cool. Worked. And it uh, almost matches the design. Pretty close. Exactly, sticklers. We're gonna get about that, but I'll tweak it real quick and see what happens. I should have done that in style editor. Oh well. Cool. So, except for the little uh, chevron handily thing, it looks pretty close to the design. You know, I might actually be able to do that in SVG. Now that I'm thinking about it. Okay. So you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to commit this as a little checkpoint and then take a break for water and a little pit stop. Let's see. No, I don't want test pilot. I want lockbox add-on. You know, I should have started a branch for this too. Let's do that real quick too. I'm doing error handling for the HTTP. That's issue 30. Yeah. Oops. Oh, not check in, check out. So it's kind of hard one progress, but this is what I've done so far. I added some CSS to style the uh, field and, uh, and tip ripped together. Added a little state to the uh, set of fields so it can tell which one is uh, focused. And I think I'm going to change this. I'm going to probably try to wrap this up into a reusable component somehow, so I'm not repeating things too much. And just added that tip. And then, uh, oh, I'll probably have to screw with that. That should not be like fancy quotes, I don't think. Oop, PowerShell. Yeah, PowerShell, just because it seems to run my build script faster. 
I'm not actually doing anything specifically PowerShell in there. Also, Ice Layer, how's it going? So yeah, I think I'm gonna check this in real quick as a little bit of progress. You know what? Actually, I'm gonna. That's gonna bug me. Let me go into the FT, uh, FTL real quick. These are like little fancy quotes, and uh, I'm not having it right now. Let's try that. Did that break anything? Yeah, no, that looks fine. Yeah, so just adding the little logic to track which field is focused, adding the markup to add the little thingy. Uh, oh, hey! I forgot the bot did that. <laughs> Where's the bot broken now? I hope not. Maybe it only says hello once. <laughs> Don't try to shut down my bot. It's been a little while since I looked at that bot. It lives on Glitch. Let's reopen this in a personal container. does this do? It's been a while since I looked at it. Huh. Oh, you know what? I think that's a different bot. I forget which bot that is. How many bots do I have in here anyway? I'm totally getting distracted now. I see, yeah, here it is. Here's the command. Hello. But it should say hello more than once. You know what it might be? It might, I wonder if um, Twitch is filtering out duplicate messages. But it does still do this, I think. It should still do this. Yeah, my fireworks still work. I need to play with that some more, though. Let me check in this progress and I'm going to take my quick break. So it's not very much progress, but it's progress and uh, part of it is CSS, which I'm very bad at, so... Do I have restrictions on what bots can be run in my chat? I don't think so. technical restrictions I guess like personal restrictions if you're if someone runs a bot and it's a jerk I'll kick it out but I don't have any like rules or anything let's get this off my machine real quick I like to do this I like to work in a branch I like to make lots of little commits and uh, push them off my, my machine as often as possible, because in case something happens to my computer, at least my work isn't gone. It's kind of a backup system. Not really. Nothing formal as that, but... Alright, so I'm going to take a break. I'm going to leave you with, the, with uh, some old commercials. I hope they're entertaining. And uh, I'll be back. Commodore 64, now in a home family pack. A family pack containing the world's number one selling home computer. A data cassette and joystick. A comprehensive teach yourself program plus three additional software packages. The Commodore family pack now available from your Commodore dealers and major retail stores. Now that's value for money. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Because the Commodore is keeping up with you. Go where you want to go. Call when you want to call. Get the lowest.
lowest price ever at Radio Shack on the most powerful transportable cellular phone system. Just $7.99 when you sign up with Radio Shack's authorized cellular phone carrier. Go where you want to go. There's nothing else to buy, and it's ready to go wherever you go. Call when you want to call. Use in your car, or go portable and take it along. Radio Shack's complete transportable cellular phone system. Just $7.99 only at Radio Shack, the technology store. As an intelligent consumer, I wanted to compare Atari Asteroids with other companies' asteroids. But other companies don't make asteroids. I wanted to compare Atari Missile Command with other companies' missile commands. But other companies don't make that either. Finally, I wanted to compare the new Atari Warlords. Unfortunately, other companies don't make it. When it comes to the video games the world wants most, nobody compares to Atari. You're watching the most exciting game you will ever see on your TV set. Telstar by Coleco, with three different games. Telstar Tennis, with digital scoring, variable speeds. Telstar Hockey, each player controls a goalie plus a forward on the other side. Oops, a goal. And Telstar Singles Handball, a game you play yourself. Telstar Handball, Tennis, Hockey, all three at an exciting low price. For great family fun, hitch your TV to a Telstar by Coleco. Discover a world beyond your wildest dreams. Discover Atari. Pioneers in coin video games like Centipede, Tempest, and Asteroids that challenge you, excite you, test you like never before. Discover the Atari that opened your eyes to the world's most popular. So the funny thing is, like Space Invaders. I own those first three arcade games They're in my basement. And the Warlords. Discover the Atari. I've got a Tempest machine, a Centipede machine, and an original Asteroids. Sophisticated for advanced needs, yet simple enough for your child to use. And I'm back, so I don't think I'm going to necessarily let this run for two more minutes. Manage your finances all at the I'm back already. Just took a quick break, refill my water a little bit. Old man less, yeah. 43 anyways. That's all that's oldish. I will say I was four years old when asteroids came out. Yeah, I've been meaning to do some basement streams at some point, too. Let's get back into my desktop here. The old when your back starts giving you trouble. Yeah, my back isn't giving me trouble, but uh, I have a few broken bone injuries that can tell the weather. That seems like an old age thing. Okay, what was I doing? Oh yeah, I guess the next thing I want to add, and stop screwing around with my bot here. I want to add the error. Oh, well, you know what else we need here? We need some, uh, need the help to add the focus ring there. You know, this actually sounds like a job for the other project I was working on earlier in the summer. Or at least I can, uh, I can steal some things from it. I look like I'm seasoned enough to know a fair bit about socket programming. Maybe sort of not. <laughs> I know more about HTTP than raw sockets, but I have done it before. if I'm in the URL bar before I start typing a URL. And there we go. See, I was working on this thing called Photon Components that uh, we were trying to centralize some of the styling for this stuff. So maybe I can just steal some of my old CSS. What 
guess we can do. Hmm, there's not styling on that. Oh, there we go. I guess, well, where's the dot field? So I'm going to put this under input. Ever done socket programming in Ruby? No. Uh, actually, I've kind of avoided Ruby in general. Here we go. We got our little uh, focus rings, but we don't have a focus ring on the password because that's the next one down. <sighs> yeah, I kind of avoided Ruby and uh, Ruby on Rails. Probably for no good reason. Straight from like uh, Perl to PHP to Python to Node. Not really a progression, but I kind of flopped over across all those languages. Alright, so. Oh, well, that didn't show up there, did it? What's our password field look like? I see we've got a widget called password input. Yeah, see now I've, I've used Chef, Puppet, and Vagrant, but um, I've just used them. Like I didn't customize them in Ruby, I did like the config files. I've done Jekyll, but I also have only like configured it. I haven't actually customized the uh, the Ruby side of it. Password input. Are we styling this? Hmm. Actually, you know what? Maybe I want to style input CSS. Yeah, maybe that's what I want to style. Let's see if that works. Yeah, I don't know. Ruby just never really caught on for me. I think there was like, some things seemed a little too magical for me. But I know some people that really love it. carry over a focus ring? It did. Oh, but our password field isn't getting it. I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Ruby is dead by any means. I think it's not like the hottest kid on the block anymore. Which I think just means that it's a valuable skill to have and there are a lot of mature apps out there with it now. this input mono space Yeah, I mean, 
I've heard people say Java is dead before too, and Java is not dead. And then people forget that a lot of Android apps are written in Java, and there's plenty of mature server stuff in Java, and all that. I feel like Ruby might be shifting into another mature language. Yeah, PHP. PHP is kind of undead. I kind of wish it were dead. There we go. Oh, well, this is not correct. Uh, we'll play with that some more. I don't like that the focus ring doesn't cover the little buttons we got over here, but that's another story. Okay, so I guess the next thing we want to add here is... Um, I need an error ring, which is going to be this right here. Yeah, I don't think you should go for language solely based on its popularity. I would say what you really need to do more than popularity is look at um, who can you recruit to work on your project? And I guess language popularity is a bit of a proxy for that, but it's not an exact one. So, but, you know, it's a, it's a mix. It's, you should look at your language to see if it fits in with your tooling and if it enables your team to do what you need it to do. And if you can recruit the right people to the team and a language influences that. But if you just go on like sheer popularity contest, I don't think you're gonna get wonderful results. And also, if you have an existing code base of a certain language, it doesn't necessarily make sense to throw it out. Yeah, and if it's open source, it has a big factor. That's for. That's also why, for the longest time, I have try have mostly avoided the Microsoft languages, like C Sharp and whatnot. I may put some time into learning them some more at some point. I'm using Windows more of these. I mean, there is Mono on Linux, which uh, I haven't had good experience with that. Kitty, you're making my leg fall asleep. This cat turns into a floppy lump when she wants to sleep. because I think I need to lean back to make this cat happy, which is an important factor. Yeah, I actually find uh, more recent Microsoft stuff interesting, especially since they have launched Azure in the last few years and they're actually supporting Linux, strangely enough. Kind of like the new Microsoft. So I'm trying to figure out how to add, I'm trying to navigate how this styling system works so I can most effectively add an error state. Let's see, we got our input widget, which lives in the widget directory. It accepts, okay, so it accepts a class name and it adds its own. Do you need help with styling? I don't know that it, well, I, I'm always bad at styling, but in particular, I'm trying to figure out this particular um, style loader webpack plugin and how it names styles, because they're weird. They scope them by adding uh, like unique IDs to each of the class names, which is the thing I haven't played with all a lot yet. And so I'm just kind of trying to figure out what is the uh, correct convention for naming these things. 
Like, I see why it's handy, but it's not a thing I've used before, and it makes it a little more complicated. So I think I should be able to just do, like, um, let's see. I'm gonna, so the next thing I'm going to do is add some validation code here, so I can say... Um, Yeah, yeah, trying to figure out the Webpack plugin's naming convention for HTML classes. That's that's exactly it. That's exactly it. Yeah, actually I'm gonna I'm gonna start this from the logic end first. Um let's see. I'm gonna add a property state. I'm gonna call it Oh kitty! Gotta move again. I considered running grip. No. Oh, there you go, cat. The guy who wrote Mono works at Microsoft these days. Yeah. I should look into that stuff again. It's another one of those things I've kind of avoided because I have limited time and uh, I don't want to throw my time at things that maybe I won't actually be able to use. For my current job, at least. And, like, my time would be better spent learning Rust over a lot of other languages. I'm just gonna add... What? How does that keep happening? I'm gonna keep that finger in the wrong key. It's a Maganera's property. And let's see... I'm just going to call this um, set field error name error. Let's say true. Just a little helper function here. And I'm going to say let's set. Hmm. I'm trying to remember. So set state is async. There's like a functional version of that, right? Trying to remember exactly how this works. Because I'm pretty sure there is a. Uh, do, 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 do. Where is it? Set state. I think you call it with a function that receives the current state and props. Yep, 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 yep. That's what I want to do. Because what I want to do for this particular thing is say. Set state. State. I'm gonna say um, let's do this. I think this is a way to do it. It's not exactly a Redux producer, but. I just want to set the error for one field. since setting the state of a component is asynchronous. It's sometimes more reliable to do it in a way like this. That's the unchange helper or the unchange event handler. 
But what I want to do is throw in some validation here. Let's do it like this. I'm gonna call this one Origin. Let's just say. Um, This is pretty brain dead. This is a pretty dumb validator, but let's just start with that logic for now. for each one of our fields. Oh, I see. That's not origin. Okay. I didn't get any lint errors yet. Yeah, I do have some lint errors. Let's see. Let's me to space out my thingies. Infix operators must be spaced. I see. Wants me to do that. Tells me I'm missing a comma. Where am I missing a comma? Oh, I see. Well, let's... Fine, fine, fine. Let's do that. Does that make you happier? Let's see you now, Lint. semicolon there. Then you want me to have a dangling comma here. Okay. How about now, Lint? Lint seems happy. Mm 
Okay. So there's like some light validation logic. Let's uh, let's make it do something. So I'm gonna say hmm, styles dot input. Yeah, it's coming from an item field. So let's do um. here too because I want to have a conditional style name or let's say oh, we have a utility for this actually can we use it here so there's a there's a package from NPM I often use called class names which lets you Construct a class name based on a set of conditions. And we don't use it on this project, but we do use something like it. Might be under common. Yeah, here we go. Common. Um, we call that class names. Okay, so dot dot common. here yeah they got dot 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 okay yeah, yeah. so give me no I didn't want I did not want to do that I want to do import from dot 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 common right class names is defined but never used okay so at least it's defined okay so what I want to do here is an add an error state to the, uh, the origin bit. So let's say class names and so I can say something like Let's pull that out of our state. So I can say um, errors origin, and then uh, give us styles input error. Right. I can actually break this up a little bit, maybe. So we got a we got a conditional class name started here. I assume that's gonna work. Let's see if my lint gives me any errors. No linting errors, that's a good sign. So what I think this allows me to do is to say something like input error. I think. And then I can do a thing like this. We'll see, we'll see, if my guesses are all correct. Put it all together, and we got no lint errors in the build. Great, wait. Warning, ba 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 that was not fun. Oh, I know what I did wrong. I have to read that, uh... The uh, build messages more closely. There's no default export. I have to specifically export class names. Okay, let's get back. Let's see what it looks like. Edit. Oh, and something broke. Tell us what broke. Okay. Class names that filter is not a function. Oh, I know what I did. I know what I did. So the class names helper that I'm used to from NPM just accepts a list of arguments. This specifically accepts an array. 
So I have to say, it's an array. The class name Telfer is actually really handy, I think. Versus um, this one is a little more limited. Oh, and we want a we want a comma dangle. These linting rules love the comma dangle. Dangling commas disturb me sometimes. All right, here we go. It's building. Big bucks, no whammies. Let's reload a lockbox. We're gonna load that. Let's edit the field. Cool. Um, but it should be an error. Okay, well, so... Ah, well, the, oh, I see. So my error style is not overriding um, the focus ring. That's fine. So if I put HTTP there... Oh, oh. Yeah, there we go. So if it starts with... So my validator is working. If it just has HTTP, then it should be an error. There we go. Oh, that's interesting. So if I just do HTTP... The error style comes in. Okay. Well, what I think I want to do then is um, ensure that my error ring shows up. I mean, I guess I could do it with something like uh, important. The way to, is that a way to do it? Mm, that does not appear. Eh, okay, that works. All right, that's cool. I don't know why it fires when it fires. It only seems to fire every few keystrokes. Like, this should be invalid. That should be maybe valid. That should definitely be invalid. What the, f the flying frick? That's very strange. Let me check something. some interaction between uh, rendering. Oh, you know what I should be doing, actually? What I should be doing? It should be a render time thing, not a state set, right? What if I do this? shouldn't be a state thing so much as um <sighs> shouldn't be a state thing so much as a render time thing i mean i think it might be interacting with the render logic because it's my parent it's like a controlled 
field that the parent is feeding the value back in. So I'm setting state possibly based on the previous value. So what I probably need to do is something a little more like this. every prop into this little controlled props thing to uh, filter it. So I'm trying to figure out, so, so it's looking at this, at this point, I need this little helper to control the class name because it's, it's getting the value. But maybe that's not what I want to do. Uh, let's do this real quick, let's do this. So, 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 I can do... just for now see if this fixes my little weirdness so I can say uh, validator validators down origin oh no chip machine why'd you feel me oh it failed me again there we go. So it's not that expensive to change the way this particular little helper works. So basically this controlled props function is like a, uh, get out of here help file. That fingered the F1. This little helper function applies some conditions to props. And I'm just making it do that more. Now well, it's gonna get a little messy here because 
as I have assumed that styles input is the same and style input error is what I want to use. Uh, that's gonna change, I think. Well, burn that bridge when we come to it. anything. I did break something according to... Oh yeah, I forgot to put a comma in here. Okay. So what I want to do with this is say... Yeah, so I want to say class name is class names... Let's do this. We're gonna say this is uh, styles input error. So then, in our special case, So I'm just kind of trying to make this a little more flexible so that it can alter the class name based on whether or not there's an error. Assigning to R value is that. Oh, I see what's going on here. the correct syntax there. Actually, that can take this out. All right, what say you, Lint? I'm sure you've got a complaint for me because I've just been typing this code off the top of my head. You seem to be fine with it? Okay. So what I'm trying to do here is to move more of the responsibility for setting the class name into this kind of controlled props filter function, um, which is kind of centralizing some of the, the reusable props handling for each of these fields. Because these fields don't have necessarily unique behavior, though one of them does, and that'll be the password. Let's see if I horrendously broke things. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Okay. I keep clicking the wrong button. There we go. Aha! It looks like our class names are working. Do we get rid of the error? Hmm, no. I do not. Okay, well, I think I'm going to start doing some, uh, some console jiggery-pokery. Oh, I know what's going on here. I'm validating the name, not the value. Let's flip this, because this is awkward. There we go. It's 
I'm just trying to like I'm going through a, a, a light validator here and if it doesn't pass the validator test then we're gonna show we're gonna add the uh, error class name and I know that there are libraries that just kind of encapsulate this kind of thing but I'm trying not to include too many more additional dependencies in this particular project okay so that is a correct error p colon slash slash ah there we go that's exactly what I wanted it to do. Do, 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 do. Invalid, valid, invalid, valid. Technically, this should be invalid also. But, you know, we're not doing full on URL validation yet. But that's cool. So now I'm not fighting with the, uh, with the render loop by using local state. What if I do this? Hoist this a little bit. That might be neater. Now the other thing I want to do is add an error message here too. You know, this is getting more complicated all the time. What if I do something like... What? Chip machine died again. Man. Yeah, let's just... Uh, let's go nuts and let's shuffle everything in the world. And we'll find some interesting music. Let's try this. I'm gonna need I'm gonna need to know if they're all valid, so I might as well do this. Uh, is valid. Because the other thing I wanna do now too is add a little uh, message under the field. So that gets a little more complicated than just class name. them right now. So now I have a little structure that says, what is the current validation state? Yeah, all right. And then I can do something like because I want this little thing to show up. And then I can style it and do all that fun stuff. Oh yeah, I and mean, I had a linting error on line 114. 
doing regex. It's not it's not actually regex yet. I botched the uh, botch the syntax there. Oh, you're doing regex. Well, uh, <sighs> may whatever you believe in have mercy on your soul. I'm just gonna go back to that for now. This should go into a better place, but I'm gonna stick it there for now. We're parsing RSC responses from Twitch for about oh yeah yeah. Well, I mean that's a that's an alright place for regexes. I mean, unless you want to get into parser design or parser implementation. This is invalid, yo. Okay, so that's at least showing up. And it goes away when we're valid. Okay, so I've got that thing showing up. Okay, so that state works. This is what we want to get to. I don't know why this little stupid pop-up keeps showing up. So I want this. This little thingy. So I'm gonna tinker around with, uh, with the dev tools again. And actually, what does that class name look like? I guess I'll find out in a minute, anyways. Doesn't have a class name because that style doesn't exist yet. Mm. Bugger. All right. So. Invalid tip, which according to the naming conventions of this loader, I believe it's gonna be called Invalid tip. But you know what? I think I'm gonna call it error tip because I'm naming everything else errors. Error tip. I'm gonna call it error tip. And I know that this thing has a background of. the content. There you go. Let's do this. This is weirdly specific. But we're gonna go with it. Also, this song is creepy as heck. I don't like it. That should give us a, an initial style to throw in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip this song. I don't wanna smile. It's been a while since I cruised the uh, full-on shuffle. Yeah, that style didn't uh, didn't apply at all, now did it? Oh, it's because I didn't save my component. Next. Next. Come on, music, more music. Oh, and it crashed again. No me gusta. This thing's rather unstable lately, I don't know why. Sorry about that, folks. Technical difficulties. Everybody making techno in the 90s. Alright, so that's a start at some styles for this thing. Now again, I want it to look like this. So, and this thing handily includes a few things like font size and what. I'm just gonna copy some of that. Let's play around with our style editor for a little while. I believe this was like style sheet 17 or some crap. Maybe 16. Maybe 15. That's not a thing I should hold in my head, but style sheet number 15 is useful to know, I guess. Um, let's make that a uh, box sizing border box. I don't 
think I need to specify the height so exactly. Mm, we're gonna make the top a little... See, these things are a little strange. Give it a padding of like, say, I don't know, 3px? What did you call the padding? You called it 4? These are weird measurements because they're like measuring from the wrong thing. What's your side padding? The padding's like 8 pix. Okay. 8 pixels. Oh, we got a border radius, don't we? We got a border radius. What's our border radius? Don't we have a border radius? Yeah, we, we got a border radius here. But you're not telling me what it is. I find this tool strange to navigate. Well, you know, I'm gonna guess. In, uh, in design review, I can be corrected. Let's go with that. How about uh, one more? Well, actually, we don't need to position that absolutely. I could say... That's about right. I just want it to be like kind of outside of the focus ring, which is kind of basically what the, uh, what the, the design looks like. Well, it's not too bad. Eventually, I'm gonna have to find that little uh, chevron, little pointer. Now, the thing is, does it change? Oh, yeah, it does change the height. That's why I want the absolute padding, because I don't want it to change the um, spacing between the fields. Okay. I want these to just kind of be like additional elements on the page. Although that doesn't match the design. But I guess the design has more padding to accommodate those. So we'll address that in a minute, I guess. Okay, that's close-ish. I guess one of the next things I'm going to do is uh, make this look a little sillier. And then add it to our strings. And I guess it doesn't need to say yo. Now that we're going to localize it, we're going to do this. Wrap it in a localized component. This is where the magic of uh, localization and FTL comes in. Item, fields, origin. And I added the uh, origin tip earlier. So now I can add origin error tip. And the wording we're going to use, I'm just going to steal it from here. Must include blah, 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 blah. I'm going to be lazy and just copy paste it straight from the design notes. Oh, but I see where that came in before. It gives me the uh, smarty pant quotes that I don't want. Man, this music player is extremely unstable today. All right. Let's get rid of the smarty pant quotes. Wait, am I in the right window? What the heck? There we go. Now, 
when it reloads, it should have strings. Or a string for that. Yeah, and that's ugly as heck because you know what I did is I accidentally lost all my work from the style editor. Go me. That's because the style editor is temporary work. Unless I save, which I'm not doing, which is because there's a mismatch between editing the raw styles and editing the pre-processed crap. this again. I almost had it. <laughs> I imagine you're not trying to talk to my bot. It crashed again. I'm gonna have to change to like pretzel rocks or something if this keeps doing it, but I do want chip tunes. Although these are more like Amiga mod than chip tunes right now. Oh, this song goes on for so long. All right, let's get back to this, I guess. Okay, I seem to remember I had... I'm gonna take it off the screen now. the danger of that, I guess. I want to steal that. Let's not even change that. I can say... Ah, your bat requires a Vela verified email address. Huh. That sounds about right. to go. Because <laughs> my commands are awesome. All right, let's save in the original file what I did for the CSS. So you're about to saying hello to me. That seems perhaps unintended. There we go. It's a little closer than I want. It's again, it's missing the little, uh, little pointy bit, but we'll get to that. That's a minor victory. Let's uh, let's check that in. What all have I changed? Been streaming for about two and a half hours. I think I got. Uh, oh, I think I should call it soon, actually. But what have I done so far? I'm and, and I'm hoping 
that the work I stumbled through today is going to carry over very easily to the password field. So now that I've figured all this crap out, hopefully the other issue is much easier to close. Okay, what have I done? What have I done? Um, added some styling for the little error tip. Added the, the, uh, the outline for errors. Hmm. Actually, I should get rid of that logic because I'm not using this field error logic anymore. Yeah, so we're not using set field error. I'm not using the uh, error state. So there's my error styling. greatly expanded this little helper here, which I may want to reorganize this at some point. But just kind of adding some light field validation. And so this is kind of reflecting that change in responsibility or change in power or whatever for that controlled props thing, because now it controls, the, it controls the style, the class name. Added a little error tip here. It's kind of pitiful, but that's uh, my little second phase here. My hard-won progress for that. All right, well, let's check that out. Progress adding error, error tip. On failed validation. I think a lot of my time just got eaten up by just the stupid process of wrapping my head around the uh, structure of this application. But that's some progress. It's not nothing. But it's not validating domain names or whatever, but we can add to that. Okay, some progress. Okay, let's push this out. Now the interesting thing I think is since I've been including the issue number, if you haven't used this before, um, I've been commenting on the issue this whole time. Basically. So you can see toward the bottom of the issue, you can see I've been working on it. You can see my progress. Which, that might be a little chatty, noisy, I don't know. But yeah, so I'm actually getting pretty close to having this issue closed, but I'm not going to jump ahead to uh, committing a pull request yet. Alright, well, shoot, it's uh, I've got more work to do, but it's 5pm uh, here and I actually have to cook dinner. So, I think I'm going to call this stream complete for now. I'm wondering, actually, if there's anyone else I could possibly raid. There's only a few folks on the stream. Thank you for hanging in with me. If there's anyone else I enjoy watching who might still be going. I've been trying to make a better habit of that. No Damon machine? You like auto repair? <laughs> you don't have to do this, but I kind of have found this guy entertaining. You know, I actually know. What's this guy up to? This guy's doing fun stuff. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna raid this guy named Oh Bother. He's doing some really fun stuff with. Uh, laser cutter or with a with a laser plotter burning the names of subscribers onto a block of wood so just to kind of keep in the habit of it i'm gonna do this uh -huh. 
how about you guys, you folks, go see him, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it a day. Maybe I'll come back Thursday. Let's see. I need to do this more often. Anyways, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching me stumble through this garbage. I uh, hope to see you next time.